get ready to start this service? Amen. Amen. Y'all ready for church? Yeah. All right. Come on, Willie. Open this up. You ready for church? Good morning, my brother. Good morning. How many of you need your path directed this morning? Yeah. Honesty is the first start to get real with yourself. Do you know we are our own self worst enemy? Yeah. It's yeah. not so much the devil, it's us. It wasn't the devil, it was Eve. It was Adam, it wasn't the devil. He did what he did, but they had a choice. We have a choice. And that's what people overlook, the choice. Father, in the name of Jesus this morning, touch your people, Father. Make them know your name is Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. Your name is Jehovah Rapha. You are our healer. Father, we thank you this morning for the awesome power. There is none like you, nowhere. And I thank you for it, Father. And I ask that you bless your people this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Remain standing for the worship team. Yes.
joy and I was praying through while you were singing that song <laughs> because before service uh, we just had a lot of theft going on lately and then somebody to steal our uh, I've been putting together a collection all week of those uh, pickup sticks for today after church and somebody stole two of them out the back and uh, I'm so anxious to look at the camera to see who did it because they're not confessing yeah if you have them give them back we need them after church today for what we're doing but uh, anyway, I was sitting there thinking, okay, I can't let that rob my joy. Praise God. 
But anyway, um, and I, w I was sitting there thinking, uh, you know, how much I appreciate the fact that we have such a diverse group of people. We have people from all walks of life here. I was talking to somebody uh, in uh, Mexico uh, yesterday, and uh, they said that they go about two hours, two and a half hours on their church services, and he, he used to be a part of our church here, and he said he was really amazed. He said he was sitting near the back, and during the whole two and a half hours, all 200 people, not one people walk, person walked out to the bathroom. And I thought, oh, well, that ain't new life. <laughs> Oh, well, there's some people with problems that we, you know, got to understand. But anyway, and I, I thought about that. I thought, yep. But uh, we, we do appreciate the fact that we uh, we have a diverse group of people here. Amen. Amen. But uh, we have a lot of things going on. We had a chili cook-off last week. Wasn't that great? Man, that chili was great. Amen. And uh, we have awards to hand out. Uh, the trophy things will be ready Wednesday. Right, Jenny? Yep, we ordered. We got trophies for first, second, and booby prize. Uh, what? Uh, no, third prize. Okay. Uh, we got bronze. Huh? Bronze. bronze. What's first prize? Gold and bronze. Gold, silver and bronze. Okay. But anyway, we'll be handing those out Wednesday. So if you participate in the ch in the chili thing, make sure you're here Wednesday night because if you don't come, you don't get your hundred dollar gift certificate or anything. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> But uh, anyway, um, and then uh, today after church, uh, we're going to do something a little different. Those who would like to stay after we have our coffee and donuts and, and get a little, we get a little bit of energy in us from the coffee. Uh, we're gonna, I got bags, gloves, and not as many of the pickup things as I wanted, but and, uh, we have pickup things that we can use some, and we're and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take the van and uh, take from we're gonna go down to corner Juno in Nebraska and just kind of cover that whole parking lot there where the cars are and the laundromat and go all the way to the mission and just kind of pick up little things not big things but little things and and pick them up I, I would ask you if you don't have a, a, a thing because we're short on them now but if you don't have one of those sticks um, you'll have gloves on if you see a needle or something like that let somebody with a pickup stick pick it up don't pick it up with your hand case of sticks yet because I'm sure we will run into all kinds of unmentionable things on the way, okay? And uh, uh, diff many different colors on some of them. But uh, anyway, uh, we're going to do that after church today. So those who would like to join us in cleaning up Sulphur Springs, there's a theory about um, open windows, and I think it really applies. In New York City, when a, when, a, when a great governor there applied the open window theory where he was arresting people for minor little issues, crime got cut down almost more than in half. And uh, when that windows theory evaporated, crime went way up. And part of the windows theory is, 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 is when there's garbage and trash and different things, it, it leads more people to be hanging around that would trash more and creates more trash and more things and, and more people who don't mind being around trash, <laughs> you get it, and, 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 and things like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna do our little part. It won't solve all the, all the uh, problems in Sulphur Springs area, but Sulphur Springs does have problems. We got a drug problem, an alcoholic problem, a homeless problem, all kinds of stuff, and God has put us right here in the middle of it for us to do something about it, what we can, amen? amen. So we're going to do what we can about it, and we're going to help. Well, we can't solve all the issues, but in partnership with the police, we've been talking about different things we're going to be doing, and having some meetings with the police of, of partnering to try to clean this area up as best as we can, amen? The one problem is you can't legislate morality. You can't legislate, no matter how many laws you pass against drug addiction or driving drunk or anything, there's still going to be people driving drunk. There's still going to be people out there dr drugging. All it does is slow it down a little bit. What really needs to happen is they need to find God. And that's, the real, that's the real thing. All this other stuff we're doing is great, and it helps a little bit, but they need to find God. And, and so we want to do some outreaches that maybe... Some of them will find God. Amen? Amen? Be praying for that. All right, let's get ready to take up our Sunday morning tithes and offering. Let's be faithful as unto the Lord. Amen? And, um, amen. We appreciate you being faithful. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. God, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have today to be able to give into your work, oh God. We thank you, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. How long has it been 
and returned to the plot and told him your house in secret. How long since you prayed? How long since you stayed on your knees till the light shone through? How long has it been since your mind felt at ease? How long since your heart knew no burden? Can you call him your friend? How long has it been since you knew that he cared?
Well, you all ready to have a sermon? I was kind of weak, but I'll take it. <laughs> well, we have Easter coming up in a couple weeks. And, um, you know, the greatest part about Easter isn't, isn't all the fanfare and programs. And it really shouldn't even be called Easter. That's a pagan holiday. But it is Resurrection Sunday. It's the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is which is the, really the only real other holiday after the Jewish holidays. It was the only the other holiday the early church really celebrated. They didn't celebrate Christmas and Valentine's Day and all these others. Not to say we can't, but Easter or Resurrection Day is, is, is really the most important day in Christianity. And really... Even though we celebrate it in two weeks, I will tell you, every day is Resurrection Day. Amen. Amen. I'm going to talk this morning a little bit about, the title of the sermon is, Can These Bones Live? Can These Bones Live? We have a lot of people out there that are hurting. When you leave church today and you drive down the street, you're going to see people that are hurting. And uh, they're, they're, they're just walking zombies, some of them. But Ezekiel 37, 1 says this. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Now, we have a little video here um, from a group back, I think, in the 50s. Uh, you might remember this song way back. Um, it's still sung once in a while. Maybe you can put that on there, Jeremy, that, that video. There it is. It was probably a, um, an old battlefield. It was a place where great warriors 
um, had fought mighty battles, and um, they had long since been forgotten. Probably in their day, they were very strong, and, and now they were just scattered bones. Ezekiel 37, 2 says this, And caused me to, buy pass, to pass by them round about, and behold, there were many, very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. They were bleached. They were so brittle that even the worms wouldn't touch them. And, 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 and the thing is, is, go ahead and put that on, uh, Jeremy. That is what it's like to have a life without God. Here is a life that is wasted. Here is a life that seemingly has no hope. Some of these people out here, drugs have left them desolate. It's stolen their family, stolen their kids, stolen everything, stolen their health, stolen their mind, stolen their emotions. Alcohol has broken it to pieces. The improper relationships have caused them to be without hope. And sin has literally destroyed them. Hopeless. All around. And then when they feel hopeless, what happens? Despair and discouragement and depression sets in. Dejected. Unhelp, unhappiness overwhelms them. And then they go out and use crack or spice or any of these things. Whatever it takes to try to somehow dull their senses. And we wonder, why are they walking around like that? Do you think they grew up in, as a teenager thinking, someday I'm going to be on that street. I'm going to be walking around looking like a, a dead person walking. And that's my, what I'm looking forward to in life. Now, somewhere along the way, something went wrong. Perhaps a friend handed them something they shouldn't. You know, they become disheartened. They become disappointed. They become destitute. And, and, and literally, with the feeling of no hope to return to maybe what they would consider their former glory. Many of them out there on that street, they had wonderful jobs. They made good income. They had houses and families. And, and they have mothers and fathers. They have kids that love them. And they're out there on the street. How much should we be thankful for that we are sitting in padded chairs in air conditioning, being able to sing the glorious things of God, being in our right mind, not walking around in a stupor, being like a zombie, or being like a, a, a dead man walking. Amen? Amen? Give the Lord a clap offering. It's something to be thankful for today. Even, even the man of God would have not known where they were if God himself would not have shown them where these bones are. Ezekiel 37.3 says this, and he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I want you to think about that when you go home today. Those of you who are going to be with me picking up the trash out there. I want you to think about that as you look at some of the people walking around out there. Can these bones live? God gives the answer. And he answered, Oh God, Lord God, thou knowest. Even the preacher, even Ezekiel, didn't feel much hope for these people. And he goes, he didn't answer him, yes. He answered him, uh, only you know, God. If, if, if they were to live, he realized, now listen to this. If they were to truly live, he realized that it was going to take a real move of God. It was going to take the Spirit of God getting into those bones and raising them up. Ezekiel 37, 4 says this. Again he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. They were dry bones. <laughs> so the command was given. And those bones stood up. But they were still dry bones. Perhaps some of you here today, perhaps some of you are dry bones and don't know it. Perhaps some of you are walking around and you don't even see it. Maybe others around you see it. But you're walking around in fear. 
you're walking around in anxiety, you're walking around in depression, you're hiding your addictions, and you think you're getting by with it, and maybe even when we're singing, you might be raising your hand and worshiping with the rest of us. But perhaps some of you here today are walking dead people. Perhaps there's a few in here today that are nothing but walking dead bones. Let me explain something to you. You can sing the songs of Zion. You can come to church. You can go through all the okie doke you want. You can do what I call the, the Eddie Haskell symbol. Remember, leave it to Beaver, Eddie Haskell? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. He, was, he was all polite to everybody, but behind the scenes, he was scheming and, 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 and plotting all these things all the time. Okay? Perhaps some of you here today are the Eddie Haskells of the modern day age. We see them all the time, don't we, Willie? We, we'd see him come to church and, oh, Pastor Tom, I'm, I really want to get my life together. I'm really glad I'm here. Just a bunch of, close your ears, bull hop. They're just dry bones and don't know. Because without the Spirit of God, no matter how you act, you could be a dry drunk, you could be a dry, you know, Oh, I've been clean for six months now. Big deal. I could care less if you've been clean five years. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't have him giving you life inside of you, you're nothing. You're dry bones. We'll just let him lay down here for a little while. We need to get into a place where we can hear the word of God. You know, some people can't make it through the day without a drink. Some people can't make it one hour without a smoke. I was so bothered last night. I had somebody call me that I so much wanted to help them. Did you know there are people, and, 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 and follow me through others, don't take this out of context. There are some people God can't help. There are some people I can't help. He called me and says, they're kicking me out. Okay, what'd you do? Not much. What'd you do? Well, <clears throat> blew a 2.6. I just had a few beers, but 2.6. <clears throat> what time did you get in? I heard you came in after curfew. Oh, it was like 3 or 4 in the morning. I went to a club. I said, what, what did you do that a couple weeks ago? We're caught drinking and I said this is your last chance don't do it again come to church and I said don't miss church next week I actually went after church three weeks ago I went over there to find out why he wasn't in church because I really wanted this kid to get to church and get drinking went over there and woke him up and he had been drinking and I said this is your last chance and so last night he called me but pastor just give me one more chance You know how that hurts? I guarantee you, Jenny heard me on the phone. Yeah, I don't speak the phone. Probably hurt us more than it did him. But where am I going to sleep tonight? Well, let's see. You had a job making more money than most people in our church. But it's all gone. Guess what? He made that choice, didn't he? Amen. Now, maybe he'll be out there for a while. Maybe, hopefully, he'll survive. He might die. We might get a call saying he's dead. But he might survive enough to someday realize what's going on. I think there's a few people in here that have been in that position. Yes. There's people here we've kicked out a few dozen times. Too many times. And all of a sudden, here you are here today. So there is hope, isn't there? But in a situation like that, I have to do what we did. Jenny had to put a couple girls out yesterday. We were feeling bad all the way home, weren't we? We had to 
just with my team and want to. But she warned him. They broke the rules over and over again. And all of a sudden, the other girls in the house were thinking, well, they can break the rules. I guess we can too. And I think that's what put her over the edge of going in there and putting these girls out. Because now the other girls were thinking they can get by with it. We can too. And, and there's some people, there's just nothing at that moment we can do anything about. There are people on that street right now we can't do anything about till they're ready. Amen? They have choice. But here's the thing. If you're here today, God has given you another chance. There are some of you here today that are walking dry bones, that are people that are caught in your addictions and you think you're hiding it and everybody sees it but you. Unless you're really good at it. There's some people so good at it, they can hide it. But you know what? God sees it. And as much as you try to look like you're a walking good person, you're a walking dead person. But there is hope. What makes us think we can overcome the world and its influences without the Spirit of God, without the Word? Amen. Hebrews 4.12 says this, For the word, word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart we need to check our intents all the time don't we we need to check our heart why are we doing this why are we doing that and make sure our motives we have to review daily we have to die out daily to sin we have to as the day goes on every day not just sunday here today but we have to every day renew ourselves in god we have to wake up in the morning and go man uh, i talked to somebody for a church i said how are you doing and the gentleman said well it's good to be on this side of the sod and that's true i like that it's good just to be alive isn't it it's good just to be here today amen be able to enjoy the presence of god there's a lot of people that are dead and gone that never got that chance there are some people dead and gone that got the chance and, and, and blew it there are people out there that need that chance and don't have it that we need to reach. There are perhaps some of you here today that need that chance. You're here today. You have the chance. You need to take advantage of that chance and learn and, and find out what it's like to serve God in his fullness, to walk in the light, to not just walk around like a walking zombie, but be able to walk around in the joy and the peace of God. Amen. Amen. To know what it's like to serve him in the joy of it. Yes. Amen. Some of you don't know what that's like. You wonder when we're singing a song and we're, we're saying, sitting here singing, look out, Satan, look out, but um bum bum, look out, Satan, look out, but um bum. And some 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 of a group out here singing, yeah. Look out, Satan, look out. And there's others sitting there. Look out, Satan, look out. <laughs> look out, Satan, look out. This one. When I come to you in the name of the Lord, you better look down. Oh, I need another point. I, look out. Thank you. Look out. Or when it starts getting a little steamy around here, starts getting where the Spirit of God moves, instead of responding, see, when the Spirit of God is moving, we're singing a song or something's going on. Or maybe I'm preaching this sermon right now and the conviction's touching some hearts. There's no in-between. You're going to either react one of two ways. You're either going to want to run out the door, find an excuse to go to the bathroom. Don't you dare get up in. <laughs> or you're going to open your heart and let God touch you and let his spirit touch you right now while I'm preaching. God can do it. Did you know you don't have to wait for an altar call? Well, I'm an altar call a little bit. God can touch your heart right now. He can heal you. All you got to do is think, God, I need you. I'm sorry, Lord. I give my all. I surrender my all. He can do it before the sermon's over. But you have a choice of how you're going to react. Are you going to let your conviction bring you closer to God? Or are you going to let the conviction push you away from God where the guilt steps in? How many ever felt that guilt when you reject God, when you don't do what you're supposed to do, and, 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 and God convicts you and says you should do this, and you say, I ain't going to do that, I'm going to do this, and then the guilt comes. And then the shame, the guilt 
pushes you away from God and the shame keeps you away from God. It's a vicious cycle. But you're here today and some of you, if you want to break that cycle, you can break that cycle today. Amen? Amen. Ezekiel 37, 5. Thus saith the Lord God, these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live. When the Spirit of God's in you, you can live. Amen. When you give your heart over to Him, He'll work on you. He'll do the work. You could work hard enough to get that raise on your job, but all of a sudden God blesses you financially. You, could, you couldn't love enough to keep your marriage, and all of a sudden things happen and things come back together. You could believe enough to be healed, then all of a sudden He heals you. You could, you could live good enough to save yourself, so He dies on the tree and He saves you in spite of yourself. By grace are we saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen? Yes. It is the gift of God. You can't earn it, but you can receive it. Amen. And I'm telling you here today, open your hearts. Take away the stony part on your heart uh, that, that is the defensive, that's angry, that, 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 that wants to use every excuse in the book not to serve God. I'm too tired. I'm too sick. Too many hypocrites in church. Don't want to go where all those hypocrites are. Why not? Come to church. Pray for the hypocrites. Maybe they'll get saved. Amen. Where else are hypocrites going to go with church? If they stay home, they're just sinners. <laughs> they come to church. They're a hypocrite. Great. I can preach at them. Maybe get them saved. I don't know. If you got addictions, come to church. If you got mental issues, come to church. Find God. Amen? Amen? He can save you. He can heal you. He can deliver you. Most of all, in spite of yourself, in spite of your stupidities, in spite of your failures, in spite of all your mistakes, in spite of all the things that you stumbled and you fell and you stumbled and you fell, He will help you if you let him. Yes. Ezekiel 37, 6. But I will lay sinews upon you, and you will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So you notice that at first, what he did, he raised the bones up, and, and they were jiggling around. They were just jiggling around. Maybe we have some people here today that are, you just don't realize, you just, you're here. God brought you out of the message you were in, brought you here, and you're just walking around bones. But it wasn't even when God put the clothes on, the flesh. They were still dead. They looked human. They looked like warriors, but they were dead. Perhaps there's some of you here today that are walking around with the flesh on, your bones, and you can talk all the talk. Praise the Lord, brother. Pastor Tom preached a great sermon today, didn't he? <laughs> you can use that holy voice, and if you really want to get real Pentecostal, it's praise God. Got to do that. Praise God. God is so good. Well, in some churches, that's anointing when they do the talk. <laughs> You don't do the does, you're not anointed. If you need the does, I'll give you the does. Whatever you need. Just find God. I guess the key word here would be wake up. Wake up to see yourself the way you really are. Are you walking bones like a lot of the people out there on the street are today? Or are you perhaps you cleaned yourself up and you kind of look like you're all together but you're still a walking zombie this is the reason perhaps that God has brought us in this place in life that we might know him the reason he's allowed us to make such a mess of our how many ever made a mess of your life oh yeah uh, Maybe he's allowed you to make such a mess of your life that 
is so he could show us who he really is and what miracles he could really do that he could take you from the pit looking up and then going lower than the pit and he could take you and all your messes and all your failures and all your stuff that you've done and think there's no hope there's no way i could get myself out of this mess the addictions the the drinking the drugs the sex addictions the all the different things he could never deliver me i'm physically wrecked my life is wrecked my family's gone everything's messed up i'm gone but you know what god has a way of making things new God has a way of putting it all back in perspective. He has a way of giving peace in the midst of your storm. Amen? Amen. He's, he's, he's the God that can give you joy unspeakable and full of glory in the midst of all the messes that you're in. Amen? Amen. He'll walk you through it. Well, sometimes when God puts things back together again, there is a noise. It might take some shaking up. Who is that, Jerry Lee Lewis? I don't hold on a second one. Or was that Elvis? Elvis. 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 <laughs> the song, right song, wrong tune. Wrong tune. Well, it's P.T.'s version. I don't hold on a second one. Let's see. Uh, Ezekiel 37, 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. This is Ezekiel talking. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to bone, as that song says. And bone connects to the <laughs> neck bone. Neck bone, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it might take, for some of you, hopefully not all of you, it might take some of you finding yourself at the end of a rope, or at the bottom of the pit. When you've hit rock bottom, the only way to look is to look up, Amen. And, and, and now I'm going to tell you something that won't preach very well. And you probably won't get too many amens, and this would not play well if I was a TV preacher. But sometimes when you find God and you're in the midst of all your stuff, God doesn't always take away all that stuff. Sometimes he leaves you without a job. Sometimes he leaves you in the bad health. Sometimes he leaves you with all those problems that you cause. But then he will give you, if you accept him, he'll give you the peace and the joy to make it through that. Amen? Amen. Now, I know you'd rather me preach that when you give your life to God, everything becomes new, that, uh, that, that your life comes back like country music ran backwards, your dog comes back in your life, and uh, your wife comes back, your husband comes back. Everything happens great. It doesn't always happen that way, but I can promise you that he will give you a way to escape. He won't give you more than you're able to bear, and you'll be able to walk through it eventually till you get out of the storm and into his grace and mercy. Amen? Amen. Did you go 37.8? But when I behold, beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, and there was no breath in them. They looked like soldiers, but they weren't soldiers yet. They looked like Christians here today, but in reality, they're just dried up bones covered in flesh. No life, no breath, no Holy Spirit, no Holy Ghost, no power, no anointing, just a walking zombie. You know what Jesus said? He said, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel 37, 9. Then said he to me, prophesy unto the wind. Isn't that kind of neat that on the day of Pentecost it was like a rushing mighty wind? Wow. Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Yes. Perhaps our prayer here should be that God comes from the north, south, east, west, that he comes in and blows a wind in this place. Yes. It doesn't have to be a physical wind, but a spiritual wind yes. that touches people's hearts, that touches your heart and, 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 and does something inside of you that, that, that makes you rise up and say, I want to serve God. Come hell or high water. Come all the trials. Come all the tests. Come all the physical problems that I have. Come all the failures of the past. God, I give them all to you, and by grace, I accept your... You know, it's, it's a lot easier than you think sometimes to accept God. Amen. Talk about a God who can do the impossible. The right. God who can heal broken marriages. He can heal diseased bodies. He can bless the finances. He can save your children. He can deliver you from addictions. He can bless you on your job. He can help you with your bills. 
When his blessings flow, they flow in every direction, but it usually takes a commitment on your part first. It takes you sometimes going through the fire before you get the miracle. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was a sermon I preached 50 years ago. The nudge, the sacrifice, and the miracle. Fire. Go through the fire first before the miracle comes. Another sermon. Sometimes we just need God to breathe on us. Amen. We need for the Holy Ghost. For you Pentecostals, Holy Ghost. For you Charismatic, Holy Spirit. <laughs> but we need the Spirit of God to move on you. Acts 2. On the day of Pentecost, when the birthday of the church, when they when, when there was Peter who had denied Jesus three times, when when they when they crucified Jesus and all the disciples got up and ran, there was 120 in that upper room, and they were sitting there. They didn't know what they were sitting exactly for. God just said, Jesus, before he went up into glory, he said, go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise which comes on high. They didn't know what that promise exactly was going to be. They didn't understand it yet, but the Bible says in Acts chapter 1, I mean chapter 2, verse 1, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is what it's all about, folks. It's receiving His Spirit in your life. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Ezekiel 37.10 So I prophesied as He commanded me and the breath came and unto them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. Why don't we have a great army here today? Yeah. It's not a number. It's an emotion. It's a desire. It's a will. It's a surrender. It's a challenge. Amen? Amen. I just wonder, do we have any other soldiers here today? Just kind of stand up for a second. If you're a soldier of the Lord, amen, be proud of it. Yeah, we got some soldiers. Come on, march with me. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier. Oh, I got a bunch of people following. Army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Yeah. Come on. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. There's an old song. I haven't heard that song in years. How about this one? Come stand up here, you soldier. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And filled out the vintage with the grapes of wrath of stone. He has reached the faithful one. Help is terrible to start. His truth is marching on. Sing it with me. Oh, glory, go. Hallelujah. Charlie, get on the piano. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, go. Hallelujah. His truth is marching Now give us the right key. Keep clapping. Here we go. attention. If you don't stand for something, you won't stand for anything. It's time that we, the church of the living God, get into formation, fall into ranks, and rise to the occasion that has been set before us. Amen? Amen. We need to be an exceeding great army. Yes. Not a wishy-washy, always looking for the easy way out church, with no spiritual backbone or Holy Spirit touching us. We need the presence of God in our lives. Amen? Amen? We are called today. This church, New Life Church, New Beginnings of Tampa, what we do here in this Sulphur Springs area with the drug addicts and the alcoholics and the, and the people that are just all messed up in so many ways that are living on the street and, and, and many of them just dying right in their sins, we are called to be an exceeding great church, not a, not a good church, 
We have to, in this time and age that we live in today, there's no in between. We have to be a great church, even if it's only five people. God can use five people much greater than he can a hundred people that are mediocre Christians. We should be a church like the world has never seen before. We should have services that bear none. When someone visits our church, they should have an experience with the Lord that they will never, ever, ever, ever forget. That's right. Nothing should even slightly, uh, the world out there, it should not even slightly resemble genuine praise and worship that goes up in this sanctuary. That's right. We need to have genuine worship, genuine praise, genuine uh, conviction for sin. Amen? Yeah. Come on up, worship team. Why? Because this thing is real. There's a song we used to sing years ago. It's real. It's real. I know it's real. It's real. It is. It's real, I said. It is. Our God is holy. It's not mad made, but it's God ordained. Isn't this the time that we let God be in control of this service? And how do we let God be in control of this service? By letting him be in control of you. Amen? Yes. Amen. He has to be in control of you. You have to be able to surrender your whole life to him. Yes. Isn't it time that we allow the presence of God to become living, breathing, touching, and most of all, moving in our lives? We didn't come here to just play church. We didn't come here well, some of you did, but some of you came here just because you felt like you had to. Some of you said, get on the bus, got on the bus. Some of y'all here, I, I know it, I recognize it. You don't want a beer. You can hardly wait till I get done so you can go out the door and have your cigarette and go home and sleep. Well, that's your choice. If that's what you want in your life, if you want to keep going on the way you are, a walking zombie, caught up in your own ego, caught up in your own selfishness, caught up in all your stuff, being miserable. Oh, I'm not miserable. I'm perfectly happy the way I am. Really? Then why do you drink? Why do you drug? Why do you do the things that you do? It's because you're trying to find a way to escape out of your miserable, miserable, pitiful condition. Why is it these people out here on the street are drinking and drugging? It's because they're trying to block out their poverty, trying to block out the position they're in, trying to block out all the messes they're in. How about we get hope in our life and then we give it to others? How about we do that? As a church, I, I, I just want us to start reaching this neighborhood. I want us to start reaching the people here that are hurting. You saw those pictures of the of, of the people on the street. That wasn't an exaggeration. On the way to church this morning, I was about quarter to seven. I drove around a little bit. Drove to the laundromat area of the park here. There was guys just waking up. I saw the drug dealers. You know, you worry about going to being to church at 10 o'clock. The drug dealers are out there at daylight. When the sun was starting to come up, they were out there already. They're out there all night. The devil works day and night. But here's something to know. God works day and night, too. Yeah. You know, Samson, he, he was a great, great, great prophet. He messed up a lot, didn't he? He got messed up, stupided up. Better word, stupided. And yet at the end, when he had his eyeballs plucked out, he was chained to a post. All hope was gone, seemingly with nothing else to live for. Right at the end of his life, he asked God for strength for one more thing. And he pulled the pillars while they were having a party upstairs celebrating that they had gotten Samson. They were having a party. He pulled that pillar down, and more Philistines were killed in that day than his whole life, everything he had done. 
he accomplished more in that one moment because at that moment when he was gone he realized there was more than just him being tied up to that post with his eyeballs plucked out it burned his eyes out talk about painful I want to meet Samson someday in heaven, don't you? I don't want to say, hey, Samson, how stupid you were with Delilah. How could you be so... No, I want to say, Samson, in your last moment, you lived for God. You gave it, I mean, in spite of the messes you were in, you thought of God in that moment. Congratulations, Samson. Some of you gone through some pretty rough stuff. Some of you had some heartaches. A lot of our vets in our program, I feel sorry for them because some of them have seen things overseas and seen things that no human should ever have to witness. And their minds are messed up and they have PTSD and everything you can imagine. They take pills for this and pills for that because they remember what's happened. But you know, we have a God that can heal all that stuff. We have a God that can take all that stuff and heal the mind in a nanosecond of time. Amen. But you got to be willing to give it to Him. you got to be willing to just surrender, surrender, surrender. Not just part of you, but to surrender your life to Him and say, God, I give it all to you. Not part. I give it all to you today. I don't want to be a walking zombie. I don't want to be a, 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 a bag of bones. I want to be a living, breathing creature, living and walking in the spirit of God. But to do that, it takes more than action. It takes more than self-discipline. It takes letting the spirit of God come in and touch your life. Amen? That means surrendering and opening your heart and saying, God, I surrender. Perhaps while we're out there picking up trash today, We'll see some homeless on the street. And we can walk up here and say, Hey, homeless person. God loves you. I don't have money. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. And, and, and work for him. And serve him. Amen. We don't have to wait till the next church service for that. You can do that today. This altar is open. If you need him, just don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. Just come on down to this altar right now. This altar is open. Here I am, down on my knees, again. And again. And again. Oh, hallelujah.
your heart today. Don't let this time pass without you finding him. there and you need God right where you're at right where you're at in front of that TV or that phone whatever just give your heart to God amen you don't have to be in this church today you can do it wherever you are right now Heavenly Father we ask that you touch those that are watching our service right now those that are convicted oh God that you touch them oh God touch their hearts open their hearts up oh God to you let your spirit flow through them oh God in the name of Jesus, those who are watching us right now, Lord. Those that will watch us later as they're played back again and again. We ask that you touch their hearts, Lord, in your precious name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, mighty God. I some of you who consider yourself warriors, just come on down here with me. Oh, 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 oh,